Welcome to the Orca Boat Shop. My name is Rod. I've got a whole series of videos on restoring wood and canvas canoes, right from taking it apart, stripping off all the old rotten wood and canvas, right back to putting it back in the water for you. I get a lot of questions by email, telephone calls on to what products I use, how much you will need to do your own canoe, and it's not really described in great detail in uh, the video series. So I thought I'd take a moment here to just explain the tools and supplies you will need to restore your own wooden canvas canoe. I'm going to assume that your boat is in good condition and uh, it does not need any uh, wood repairs or rot replacement uh, and it's ready to go with new canvas. So I have here a whole bunch of materials that I use, the common materials that I use to restore the wooden canvas canoes in my shop for customers. Obviously the first thing you're going to need is some canvas. Now I don't have a piece here, but the standard is number 10 duck, that's D-U-C-K, just like the bird. And it comes, uh, number 10 is about 14 ounces per square yard of material. And generally comes in 60 inches wide, which will cover almost, almost all canoes out there. There are some big freighter canoes that you may need to buy some wider canvas. The thing is, is with other canvases, if you go a little wider, you may have to go a little bit uh, thinner. Alright, so your canoe is ready for canvas. So the first thing they probably want to do is treat the wood. The, uh, sometimes the, the uh, old bare wood is looking a little dry, so we maybe want to waterproof it a little bit and to rejuvenate it with a bit of oil. The common and most standard is uh, boiled linseed oil. Um, that's easy to apply and it's relatively inexpensive. In the shop I may use you know half cans of old varnish that are really no good anymore for putting on to a clear coat finish and doing bright work. I take some old varnish like this, I'll thin it down by 50% with some thinners and use that and coat the bare hull on the outside prior to putting the canvas on. Once that oil or varnish is dry, it's time to install your canvas and I've got a video on that so we're not going to talk about that process here other than you'll need either uh, some stainless steel staples and a simple staple gun. I'm not a big fan of stainless steel staples myself. I don't know the quality of stainless steel that they're making these staples out of. I've seen boats come back with rusty staples. I don't know whether somebody's used stainless and they rust it anyways. So I tend to use uh, the brass tacks, either 5 8 or 3 quarters long, and they are simply just tacked in. Here I've got a little tiny hammer here. A good hammer for this process would be what we call a cobbler's hammer. The actual face of the head of the hammer is a bit rounded, so when you hit the nail, it makes a dent and goes into the wood. You'll need to stretch the canvas while you're tacking it on with some canvas pliers. These are commonly sold in uh, art supply stores for stretching canvas around picture frames. They have sort of a flat round or sort of a smooth rounded back surface here when you grab the canvas and you stretch it as I do under the boat. This surface gives you some leverage to pull on the canvas. You may want to use a scrap piece of wood in there so you're not uh, getting the corners of the pliers denting into your inwear. So once the canvas is on, I like to use some sort of preservative to treat the canvas. The canvas that I sell is just common, plain, untreated canvas. My shop here is in the west coast of British Columbia. We get a lot of rain, we get a lot of mold, we get a lot of mildew happening on, on wood surfaces. So I like to treat the boats that I'm going to be doing locally here with a preservative. You will need at least a gallon of this stuff. It's liquid like water. It will soak into the canvas quite readily and will disappear quite fast as you brush it on. So this is about uh, $60 a, a gallon at our local hardware store. I don't sell this stuff. It smells a lot. You'll want to do this outside on a sunny day and leave it outside without any rain, whatever, for four to five, six, maybe even seven days a week and let all of the fumes come off. You cannot do this indoors in your shop, certainly not in your garage attached to your house. It is not for use inside. It does smell. Even outside, I will wear a respirator mask and some eye protection, making sure that I'm not splashing it in my eyes. 
Once the preservative is dry, you're ready to move on to your filler. I use a product called Robson RT10 from a local company here. This product is designed for the insulation industry. So this product would be used for steam pipes that are wrapped in canvas and then this is slathered on as an insulation to keep the pipes hot as the steam is moved throughout buildings. You'll see that in underground parking lots as you look up. Pipes are wrapped in steam and then it's slathered with a product like this. I do sell all of these, this product on my website. The, the advantage of this is that it's latex based, meaning that it will dry very quickly. You don't want to be doing it outside in the sunshine. You won't even be able to get it on smooth before it starts to lump up and dry on you. But the advantage of this is that it stays pliable. It's basically a latex rubberized compound and will always stay pliable. You can freeze it, you can boil it once it's cured it will last quite a long time. The advantage for me in using this over traditional fillers which are oil based and there's recipes online which are generally uh, really just thick paint. People use uh, linseed oil, thinners, uh, thickening agents and even some paint in there. But the, the advantage of the latex filler is that it dries quickly. So I can move on to painting a boat within three or four days of applying the mastic filler. It's easy to apply. We can just take a, a spreader or a sponge. I like to apply it onto the canoe in sections and then take a wet sponge or a wet rag and rub it into the canvas, allowing, making sure that the, the thin down first coat is saturated right into the canvas nice and well. Subsequent coats go on a little bit faster and maybe can go on a little thicker and you can again rub it out with your, with your bare hands or gloved hands or a wet rag to make it all nice and smooth. You do want to get this on smooth as possible on the first go around because it is not as sandable as a traditional paint filler or an oil based filler. So you want to get this on smooth first time around or you'll have some difficulties in smoothing out the hull later. So how much filler do you need? You only need one pail to do a 16 to 18 foot canoe. Three coats will do it. You may even have a little bit left over in the bottom. But if you find that you are calling me up or ordering another pail, you've probably put on too much, too thick. Once the latex filler is dry, which for me I usually leave it a couple of days inside the shop, it's good and dry, I like to then prime the hull with a high build primer coat. This is oil based. And the reason that I like to use a, a high build primer is because these paints are designed to link between the latex filler and the oil-based uh, covering paints, your green, your red, whatever color you're choosing to paint your boat. So the one that I use uh, most common is called Pre-Coat. It's by Interlux Paints. It is basically a thickened paint that has a lot of micro balloon fillers into it. If you paint it on with a roller and tip it off with a brush, you sand the next day, you recoat. Every time that you paint and sand, paint and sand, the hull will get smoother and smoother and smoother. So this is a high build primer for filling those tiny little voids when you maybe didn't get your filler on as smooth as you would like to have it. There are other high build primers out there by Pettit Paints. I've not found them to be all that good only because if the can sits on the shelf for a while, all of the heavy solids sink to the bottom of the can and it's a heck of a time trying to get that solid mass remixed into the oil bases. I find the pre-coat is not as bad on that. You can shake it up, give it a good stir, and it's ready for paint. Once you've got your three coats of primer on, nice and sanded smooth, you're ready to paint your canoe your chosen color. The two brands of paint that I have used and are most commonly sold across North America are Interlux Bright Sides or Pettit Easy Poxy. Both of these are polyurethane. There, it's a one part paint. I find uh, you know that the colors of fire red in bright sides is pretty close to the fire red in Pettit paints. Sometimes it's just a matter of if you see me using different paints, it's what's available in the wholesaler at the time. I may go to look to order up some bright sides fire red. They don't have any on their shelf. Fire red in Pettit paints will do just fine. As far as coverage, you'll get three coats out of a liter of paint, whether you're using Interlux or Pettit, and I don't have any recommendations on which one is better, although I do sort of find that the Bright Sides has a higher gloss on the finished coats. 
You'll probably be doing a little bit of varnishing and bright work on your canoe, whether, you're, whether you've stripped the inside completely down to bare wood, or you just need to touch up varnish on all the trim and the inside ribs and planking. If you're down to any bare wood, you want to make sure you get all of the old varnish that's flaking or chipping off, get it off, because new varnish is only going to be as good as what's underneath it. In other words, if you put a couple of coats of new varnish onto your old canoe, onto bad varnish that's flaking off and is old, as soon as the boat gets wet and the wood swells up, these flakes may just start to come off again and all of your new varnish will come off with it. If you have bare wood, I would recommend you look at uh, Sea Gold, which is bipedic paints. This is actually a water-based uh, uh, varnish which dries very quickly and you do not need to sand between coats. Therefore, on a good sunny day, you can apply three coats of this water-based varnish in one day. And because it's thin, it will soak into the wood and sort of uh, seal the wood up as it is before you want to put on any high gloss varnish. Now this does come in uh, satin or gloss, but the gloss is not as glossy as what we would like to think. Uh, or what you probably are imagining a nice shiny new boat so but I will put three coats onto this now this saves time in the shop so for the customer who's paying me I can apply much more varnish quicker and build up some protection with the sea gold but I will generally almost always top the sea gold with either Pettit Easy Poxy high build varnish or Captain's varnish or Interlux schooner varnish. Either of these will do just fine. I don't have yet have any recommendations on sort of you know which is better. They're all going to claim that they have the highest UV protection, which is what you're looking for. I do find that some varnishes are thicker than others and some are thinner than others. I don't want a varnish that's super thin, you gotta put in many coats. I don't really prefer any varnishes that are super heavy unless you're painting a flat surface which will self-level out. So I find that the Pettit uh, Easy Poxy or a Captain's Varnish is sort of in that mid-range of viscosity, goes on easy with a brush or a roller and tipped off and you can walk away. And, and, but you do have to sand between the coats of the high gloss oil based varnish for a good bond to the next coat. Every time you sand and varnish, sand and paint, you get smoother and smoother. So I hope this video has uh, been very helpful to you in understanding the materials I use the basic amounts that you would be required to canvas your own uh, canvas canoe at home. So really appreciate you watching. Do consider checking out my website at orcaboats.ca whereby you can go to my link to shop and purchase most of these materials to do your own work. Thank you very much. Stay